Talking now with Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury, also from Dirt, Dirt Cheap Cycles, John Eatonson Studio. Morning, guys. Morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Great to see you. How was your commute here with the snow? Everything okay for you guys? Not bad, actually. Once the, you got out of the driveway, it was fine. Yeah, road's pretty good. What are we talking about today? An ORV park? I know, John, you've been working hard on this, and Sheriff Salisbury, we've been talking about this off and on for a couple of years now, I feel. A lot of years. Many, many years ago, I started off here. Well, I wasn't the first one. I was the third or fourth in the series of ORV deputies for Mason County. And we had all kinds of open land back then to ride on, which uh, Green Diamond, most of it was Green Diamond property. And and quite a few years, for over for almost 30 years, I rode that. And Green Diamond, because of issues, uh, dealing with issues out in the woods, had decided to close down their, their public land, mm -hmm. which was horrific for our family because we were all riders. Um, a few years ago, John came up with this idea of, of making a collaborative effort uh, with Green Diamond and, and opening up some property, and it's been a, a wonderful thing. I, I congratulate uh, John for doing what he's done because it helps us in the lands that we are trying to control to give play, people a place to go ride that, that's safe and, and a controlled environment. And I also really credit Green Diamond for stepping up and after the shutting their lands down, working with John to make a place so that we, we do have a place to send people to go riding and, and preserve the other uh, areas that they need to have preserved. John, you, you uh, dirt cheap cycle there, so uh, obviously a, a good background in in uh, ORVs and mo motorcycles and things like that. So was it difficult connecting with Green Diamond to start this thing and say, hey, we got to have something here to do some areas for folks to recreate? Well, I've been doing things with uh, motorized recreation for quite a few decades now and set on uh, two of the highest recreation boards in the state. And uh, I'm very familiar with dealing with the paperwork side of things like this but uh, it, it just kind of took a uh, a stance change um, with Green Diamond. They had uh, put the gates up um, and thought that would cure the problem and it did not. It was uh, it was one of those things where the good people comply mm -hmm. and and the one percenters do not. And so by putting all the gates up on everything, they pretty much gave the people that were giving them a hard time free reign because they had so few enforcement for so many acres. And um, so what we're hoping to do is to be the eyes and ears for Green Diamond and uh, to be good stewards of the land and to stop those uh, people from forest product theft and vandalism and uh, illegal dumping and all that sort of thing. In fact, I've got incentive programs with, uh, with my members so that if they see um, illegal dumping out there and that they can make note of it and get some photos in a GPS location and that we are able to prosecute the person the next year their membership is free. Oh, wow. And uh, Green Diamond itself has a reward program uh, that is uh, monetary for the the same sort of deal. So uh, we we essentially are helping yeah. Green Diamond to make it a cleaner and and better and safer place. And in exchange for doing that for them, they allow us to recreate in a manner that is safe and uh, as free from liability as possible for them. So. Uh, um, I actually have Haas and Wilson Haas as my attorney, and they do the paperwork side of it. And we have uh, a very strong uh, liability waiver. And uh, insurance, of course, is uh, very expensive mm -hmm. on something like that because you're dealing with, you know, uh, essentially in that area it could be approaching $100 million worth of timber in yeah. that area. So everything has to be insured and everything has to have waivers. And when we do anything at all, we have to make sure that it's compliant environmentally. So it's paper hoops to jump through, but if you're just persistent and just keep knocking it out one page at a time, eventually you get there. Yeah, Jeff, I think the important thing is that I, I've known John a long time and, and uh, working in the legislature with John on other ORV issues is that um, his shop and most of the shops around actually but John in particular over the years when when we're concerned about one of our biggest things is noise and, and the correct exhaust and that kind of things on the on the motorcycles John's been a proponent statewide of people you know being in compliance with all the state laws and helping people to, to through his shop 
to figure out a way to make their bike compliant, to find the parts that are necessary to make their bikes, bikes compliant, um, and, and, and doing it all legally. And, and it, it keeps the, the land out there safer when we're all having our spark arresters and things like that, and everybody's in compliant, and the noise uh, is keeping it down for people. Um, the other part about this is that we're hoping to do, it, it actually helps the sheriff's office because as John said, there's a, there's a lot of land out there. The largest percentage of our land in Mason County is owned by private landowners. Mm -hmm. And they constantly are calling us to come out to do some kind of ORV enforcement somewhere. We really never had it for the last couple of years, few years, anywhere to tell anybody to go ride. There was, there was no place unless they had their own small piece of property to go ride. Now we do. We have an area that we can, we can send them to John and get them signed up. And, um, and we have an area that, that John is working with us, and we've got a little ways to go yet on some things, legal things again. But we're working as far as uh, myself and my command staff and some of our other folks in search and rescue to be able to use John's property but also help John out there, um, also be eyes and ears in our off-duty time, some of us ride, and uh, to be out there. But w we have to look into at different things within our office, too, to make sure that we're in compliance with everything. But we're certainly supporting John's efforts to keep uh, a, a nice recreational activity but also keep it very as safe as can be. Um, the other thing I wanted John to comment on is that a lot of places don't do this as well. Um, many areas that you go into to ride, um, it's it's all you, you know you think it's teenagers and adults riding or or or, or older and uh, John's working on an area uh, uh, for, for for young riders for for, for little oh, little wow. folks yeah. that the parents can actually see if you can explain real quick on yeah. that John what you've got sure well um when you go to a ski resort it's not usually a free for all because um, they have set certain specific areas up Green runs, blue runs, black runs, yeah. black diamonds. Uh, same, same idea there. We have areas that are color coded that are designated uh, for different degrees of skill levels on riding, and we have been uh, working on a a training area for uh, children and beginners at, and we try to put those as close to the uh, staging areas as possible. And right now we have three staging areas. All our parking is back in the woods. Um, it's not going to cause any problems at all with uh, with neighbors. Okay. Oh, I've already been contacted by several uh, different community groups that were afraid that they were going to be inundated with uh, with all these vehicles parking up and down the road and bikes running up and down the road. And and no, if if it is, it's not our guys because yeah. our guys have keys to the gates, and our parking areas are or half a mile to one is possibly as much as two miles back in. And uh, we all have specific hang tags. We all have stickers for the vehicles. We all have ID cards. We all have uh, serial numbered keys. All the serial numbers are the same on, on every single piece that you have. Your hang tag, your sticker on your bike, your key, your ID. And uh, and then uh, there's a e uh, data base that is accessible by smartphone that law enforcement and security can just by seeing the the number they know a full legal and a date of birth so it's easy to keep up with who is there who has a insurance and who has a uh, a waiver on file which oh, wow. was necessary to have this happen but, yeah but yes we're setting things up because i want the kids to have a place to ride i lived out at limerick uh back in the 90s and i taught my kids how to ride out there and and the kids got to have a place. Yeah, they got to have a place for that. And I would, I would love to see my grandkids learn out there as well. Well, I, I think it's a great thing. And, and and again, I, I think oftentimes you know you don't see maybe as many when the law enforcement side supporting this is probably most of you know I've ridden my whole life and yeah. raced motorcycles my whole life, but to to have somebody that's working to always help people keep be compliant I, and again I know that in the past uh, I've contacted people who are running a straight pipe exhaust it actually doesn't help their bike any at all in the first place and and sent them down to John's shop they said well I can't get this and I can't get that and John has been able to you know uh, modify the things make them right make them safe uh, and, and make them good for our community and I, I think it's a wonderful way to go as compared to the way other other ways other communities run it and, and it's much safer and and I think it's going to bring back our community needs some things, and I think it's going to bring back some recreation to our community. And I, I applaud John, and also again, I, I, I just let you know I, quite publicly, I was, I was um, quite upset with Green Diamond when they gated off everything, and my concerns were the same as John's. I didn't think it was going to stop people from riding out there, and it surely it didn't. And I had conversations with uh, Doug Reed. 
um, of the Reed family over this on the phone and talk to Doug quite often and also Blade Fry at Green Diamond. And I applaud them for, for coming around to working with our community and working with John and doing it in a very professional and safe way. And, and I, I very much support those kind of efforts in our community. That's a good conversation here. We had a lot more to get to. We're going to not be able to now. John, give us a plug for Dirt Chief Cycle when folks can come in, learn a little bit more about you, what you do. Tell us where you are, hours, phone numbers, things like that. Okay. Well, I've, I've had Dirt Cheap Cycle uh, since 2000. And uh, I'm right up on the hill above Tozer's uh, is the old Verls building. Mm-hmm. And I know everybody in town remembers the old Verls building. But uh, I stock over 12,000 different part numbers. I normally have your part. Um, I really didn't mean to be a motorcycle store. It's just one of those things that happened. My garage just kind of gave birth <laughs> one day. And... Uh, and so I'm not a franchise. Uh, don't think of me as the Ford or Chevy place. I'm not trying to sell you a new truck, but I do want to stock your part, and I want to save you money. So I'm I'm kind of uh, cut rate or shucks or pep boys for for bikes for bike stuff. Yes. And the phone number uh, four two seven dirt. Perfect, <laughs> John Casey. Thanks Thank for coming in. Thanks. Good to see you guys. Do you know you have access to the fastest internet in Washington State? Switch to iFiber Communications right now and take advantage of our special offers. Pay only $29.95 for 100 megabit high-speed internet or get three months of internet absolutely free. That's right, $29.95 for 100 megabit speeds or three months of internet free. Shop, stream, and game like never before with iFiber Communications high-speed internet. Call 360-427-4000 or check us online at iFiber.tv. Subject to credit approval, valid on a 24-month contract. 